This Rise and Shine podcast series has been made possible by the generosity of the Zeitelman Family Foundation, which is committed to the unity and continuity of the Jewish people through meaningful and relevant Jewish education and wisdom. I know a woman whose child was blind and able to speak or to move, but when she would come near him, his smile at the sound of music around him was so spectacular that one knew that they were in the presence of greatness, of pure soul energy. This is Rise and Shine, a podcast that offers timeless wisdom and uplifting meditations to fill your heart, feed your soul, and start your day on a positive note. Here is Adrian Gold Davis. When I found out that I was expecting my first child, I was terrified. You see, I'd been at a New Year's Eve party the night of conception, where I drank copious amounts of champagne cocktails and may or may not have consumed other things which I will decline to mention here. What if I had inadvertently damaged that fetus with all my shenanigans? I was already 33 years old which is rapidly approaching what they call geriatric pregnancy. I had seen and read about fetal alcohol syndrome and the effects of drugs on a newborn, and I remember going to my obstetrician and bawling my eyes out as I tearfully and shamefully confessed under what circumstances this baby had been conceived. He listened carefully and kindly. And then he said something I have never forgotten. And in hindsight, it may have been the most grounded and wise advice I'd ever received. He said this, Adrian, every single birth is a miracle. So much more can go wrong than goes right. A person can do absolutely everything wrong and give birth to a perfectly healthy baby. And a person can do many things we advise against and still can carry without consequence full term to fruition. On the other hand, a person can do everything we consider to be right. They can wrap their life in bubble wrap. They can eat only organic foods, never touch a drop of alcohol, take any drugs. They can be physically fit and exercise throughout the pregnancy. And if that baby is born with problems, either physical or intellectual, there is nothing that can be done or could have been done to avoid this. This is now out of your hands. Treat the rest of your journey, Adrian, with care and attention, but not obsessive worry. Stress also takes a toll on your health. And remember that in the end, birth is a miracle gift. Well, it's almost 33 years later. Of course, I have a healthy child, who's only ever been damaged over the years by some of my poor parenting choices. But in the end, that New Year's Eve was inconsequential. But I am still grateful. Still, I've often wondered about the triangle of ingredients that goes into the arrival of a baby, the egg, the sperm, and God. Since we Jews consider this a three-way partnership, And since we believe that every soul that finds a home in a body is created by its physical parents, what's God's job in all of this? So we learn that every soul that enters a body will be placed in exactly the right family for its spiritual needs. It will have the perfect parents for its journey in this transmigration or incarnation, if you will. And as such, the child is the perfect child for its parents. The soul exists before birth and returns to the world of souls after death. The work of the human is to elevate that soul within the confines, circumstances, and experiences it has for its, please God, 120 years of life. And the parents will get the perfect child for them as well. As I often say, we marry our homework or raise it. There's no coincidences. All is from divine providence. So when I learned that two great Torah giants, sages of the past centuries, would stand when a child with a mental disability came into their presence, I asked myself, why? Two such famous luminaries called the Chazonish and the Stipler Gom responded this, a child that is disabled is closer to perfection. That is why he's so limited. He doesn't need all of his faculties for his mission in this world. 
I read that although it was difficult for the Chazanish to get up from his bed at the end of his life, he nevertheless stood up with a big smile for a father who entered the room with his 13-year-old son with Down syndrome. The Chazanish explained, I am standing for this boy who is one of the holiest souls in the generation. At the boy's bar mitzvah, Rabbi Leib Gerwitz turned toward the boy's parents and he said this to them, You are fortunate that Hashem sent you such a lofty and precious soul. As its earthly guardians, you should consider yourselves fortunate to have this soul in your family. This reframe is not just more comforting to the parents. It's a truth for us to accept. We are told that gifted souls enter this world and shine, bathing their light upon all who surround them and drenching us with their beauty. When they pass on, the loss of their light is profound. Rabbi Svi Friedman said that challenged souls enter, stumble, and fall. They pick themselves up and fall again. Eventually, they climb to a higher tier where more stumbling blocks await them. Their accomplishments often go unnoticed, although their stumbling is obvious to all. But by the time they leave, new paths have been forged, obstacles leveled, and life itself has gained a new clarity for all those yet to enter. Both are pure souls of the essence of the divine. But while the gifted shine their light from above, the challenges meet the enemy on its own ground. Any real change in this world is only on their account. Now, another approach to this question comes from the gifted writer and Jewish teacher Aaron Moss. He wrote an article some years back called, Why Does God Create Severely Handicapped Babies? Here's what he said. And it doesn't escape my notice that there were some similarities to what I had heard from my obstetrician. He wrote this. Every birth is a gamble. A soul enters the world innocent and pure, but it may not stay that way. This world is a maze of diverging pathways, both good and evil, and the choice is ours which way we go. Once a soul enters a body, it's free and therefore vulnerable to corruption. While acts of good elevate the soul, every act of evil makes a blemish on the soul. Some souls are so lofty, it simply isn't worth the gamble. These souls are too precious to risk being compromised by life in a body. They are too high to come down to this world. But the other option, not to be sent down at all, he writes, to never reach this world, would mean that we'd miss out on meeting these holy and lofty souls and hearing their message. So, these souls do come down. But in order to be protected from the potential evils of an earthly existence, they are sent down in a body that will not compromise their holiness. They enter this world in a form that's above sin, above evil. From a purely physical perspective, we call them disabled or handicapped. From the perspective of the soul, they are protected. They will never sin. Their sojourn in this world can often be brief. And in terms of this world, it may seem sad, but they have retained their purity and they have fulfilled their mission. Now, I love this answer because these special souls remind us that true love doesn't need a reason. You know, we often love others for what they can give us. We love our children because they're cute and smart and high achievers, and we love our spouse for the pleasure and contentment that they give us. We love our parents because they care for us. This is love, but it's not pure. Then he goes on to write this. When a child is born that will never achieve worldly success, cannot provide the usual source of pride for her parents, All extraneous reasons to love her fall away, and what's left is the purest love that there can be. These children are lovable, not because of what they do for you, and not because of what they will one day become, but simply because they are. These pure souls remind us what love should be. Only such a pure and holy soul can elicit such a pure and holy emotion. We can only stand in awe of them and the parents and friends who care for them. 
and we can only thank them all for giving us a glimpse of what true love really means. You know, I know a woman whose child was blind and unable to speak or to move or to even breathe on his own. But when she would come near him, his face lit up like the sun. His smile at the sound of music around him was so spectacular that one knew that they were in the presence of greatness, of pure soul energy. And the family of this child found their own greatness manifested in loving, caring, and learning from him. This week... Can you reframe the paradigm around those souls here on earth who appear to have nothing to offer you productively? Can you examine their family lives, their impact on those closest to them, and see them as the heavenly gift bestowed upon their parents and upon the world? Don't see helping in their physical journey as onerous, but rather as a privilege like sitting at the feet of a master. Can you search for the soul light in each of us and remind yourselves that while it seems like we're bodies on a journey of life, that we are in fact souls being carried through this journey by bodies, and that no matter what stage the body is in, the soul is perfect and unblemished and beloved and holy because then, well, then you're really living in reality and you'll be able to see their light more clearly and allow it to light our way as well. May we all merit to internalize this paradigm and teach it to our children as well. Thanks for listening to Rise and Shine. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe to Momentum Podcasts on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Join Adrian again next time for more timeless wisdom and uplifting meditations that fill your heart, feed your soul, and start your day on a positive note. This podcast was sponsored by the Zeitelman Family Foundation. Spread the wisdom. Inspire Jewish individuals around the globe by supporting Momentum's podcasts. To sponsor, contact podcast at MomentumUnlimited.org. You're listening to a Momentum podcast. For unlimited inspiration, wisdom, and empowerment, visit MomentumUnlimited.org.